Hello guys and welcome to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz and this is the show where we talk about level design while playing cool maps. Today we're playing a new Half-Life 2 Episode 2 mod called The Citizen Returns. This name should be fairly familiar to anyone who's enjoyed Half-Life 2 since it was released. The original Citizen was released in 2008. There was then The Citizen 2 released in 2010 and now we have The Citizen Returns which is what we're playing today. This is the 2014 release and it features an updated version of The Citizen 2 I believe along with some new original content as well. And this has been getting some fairly mixed reviews on Planet Philip. I was reading through a lot of the comments and people seem to be pretty divided. It's an interesting mod to look at. There's some things I like about it and some things I really didn't. The main issue I had with the mod was that it tries to convey a really intense story using multiple NPCs with full voice acting. Unfortunately, most of these characters are completely unlikable. And I found some of the voice acting to be very, very grating, including the main character, Larry. It sounds like he's voiced by a computer, like a, a Microsoft Sam or something that's just been uh, pitched down a couple of octaves and just kind of left. He's got the charm and personality of a brick <laughs> which is a really big problem when he's like the focal point of the entire story the player really needs to actually care what happens to this character and for me anyway whenever i saw him i just wanted to shoot him in the face <laughs> which is kind of a problem when your mod is focused so heavily on story like this the other issue is and this is kind of an issue that other mods which have had long sections of story exposition in it, things like Underhell comes to mind, which had very, very long sequences of just kind of people talking to each other, but they're actually interesting to listen to. Uh, and they had great voice acting, which really, really helps there. In this mod, you have, like you're seeing here, these huge scenes of voice acting, but it's just not that interesting and engaging to listen to. And with the voice acting issues, compounding the problem even further it just really really starts to grate on you after a while but the mod isn't all bad there are certain areas where the quality really does pick up unfortunately these areas are really really few and far between in fact i can count them all on like a couple of digits which is a shame and uh, we'll talk about those when we get to them but uh there is some promise here, but for the most part, I just found it to be very, very grating all the way through. You think you can save him? Probably. So, I've been talking over most of the intro here, which is a bit of a problem, but that's kind of an issue in this whole mod, this kind of story all the time, almost. Get it all ready. So, another issue we're seeing here is that these two characters are both voiced by the same voice actor, and one of them has just been pitched up a little bit, which again is super weird. I mean, when you're casting voice actors for your mod project, this is the kind of thing you really want to avoid. Having two characters voiced by the same person. It's really, really weird. So, you've been found half dead on these train tracks. The resistance saves you, brings you back to full health. And now here we are at the beginning of the story. One thing that is immediately obvious, which continues throughout the entire mod, is that the maps are beautiful. The team that made this mod have a lot of very, very talented artists. There's an extreme amount of new custom content in the form of new map models, textures. There's even a new enemy type, which is bizarrely you only see like twice in the entire game. Unfortunately, while the maps are beautifully made, uh, when it comes to the actual level design and the thought behind the encounters and what the player is actually doing, you know, second to second in the mod, it does kind of falter and fall down on quite a few occasions, unfortunately. Uh, there's a lot of busy work that you do as a player, which really isn't that much fun. And there's a lot of scripted linearity, which is just impossible to get past. Well, you kind of expect that at the beginning, on such a story-focused mod. But uh, there's even some questionable game design decisions here as well. So, for instance, right at the beginning of the mod, you're fighting Combine Soldiers with shotguns and AR-2s. Uh, as a player, you're given a shotgun like this. But this is all you really have. And uh, according to the mod author's comments on Planet Philip, they didn't want to add a lot of suit energy pickups to the mod because you're not playing as Gordon Freeman. Now, while that makes sense from a story perspective, from a game design perspective, it actually breaks the gameplay fairly significantly because if you're at 100 health and zero shields, 
then you're effectively at half health for the entire game, essentially. But yet there's nothing been done in the level design to address this. You're still fighting hordes of combined soldiers with very powerful weapons, and there's not enough health pickups in the maps to compensate for this difficulty increase. Which makes the mod extremely artificially difficult in a very, very frustrating way that players can't combat against. You're just not given enough resources to survive most of the time. This intro is in fact a great example of this. I've died so many times trying to record this. <laughs> because combo soldiers just rush in with shotguns and AR2s and just mow you down. You have to play this whole area very, very tactically, which... Yeah, I don't really enjoy playing that way in Half-Life 2. I mean, it's doable. You can see here that the enemy just bomb rushes you and you just have to retreat. There's no other way to do it. The other annoying thing is, because right at the beginning of the mod, it feels like they didn't want to give you any particularly powerful weapons. So all the combine here with AR2s do not drop them when killed. And it feels extremely artificial as a result, which I really, really didn't like. I think I commented a lot on this on the uh, live stream I did. But this is kind of a recurring theme for the entire mod. It sacrifices the player's enjoyment to tell the story. Which feels completely wrong in my opinion. You want to present interesting gameplay first and have that support the story. You can see here. I fast-forwarded through a couple of deaths because that's no fun to watch. You can take out these guys. So the Combine are attacking your citizen base and uh, it's time to get out of here before you get completely obliterated. Again, these these voice actors which have been pitched up and pitched down just sound completely bizarre. <laughs> Screw this. this is Larry, the main character that you'll be interacting with. God, you made it. You made it. You had me worried there for, well, quite some time. I think this voice actor right here is probably the best one in the game. She's actually really, really good. Oh, you really should go as soon as possible. Most of the others I wasn't too impressed with, though. However, this is another scene where the story is kind of forced upon you. You can't move. You can't do anything until you're kind of out of the cutscene, so to speak. Which again, um, the mod is just really, really heavy-handed like this. When it wants to show something to you, it will sometimes just literally take control of your character like this and say, nope, you're not moving until the story has been spouted at you. Which uh, doesn't really feel right in a Half-Life 2 kind of mod or game. Again, as an aside, beautiful environments. Really can't complain about anything here. Going back to the, uh, the kind of scripting and the way the story is presented to the player, it's very, very heavy-handed all the way through the mod. I think this is something that a lot of mod authors struggle with when you have a story-heavy mod, is actually presenting that to the player 
without kind of grabbing them by the face and you know shoving their head right into the story. <laughs> uh, Half-Life 2 gets around this by having things be fairly ambient. Like a lot of the story is just told in the environment. Uh, there's a lot of things like look triggers, the things like valve uses, so if the player looks at a certain object, a character you're with will say something about that object, and it will sometimes be, you know, a little bit of exposition to the lore. Uh, things like when you're travelling with Alex in Episode 2, or even Half-Life 2, you look at a specific object and she'll say something about it. A great example is when you look at the, uh, the uh, explosion after the Citadel blows up in Episode 2, she'll start talking about it when you look at it. But in this mod, it's it's just done in a much more rigid fashion, which doesn't feel like Half-Life. And in some cases, like the the level just will not move forward until we've listened to a specific story scene, even though it feels very very artificial to do that. Interestingly, this area here is one of the more free-form areas. So. In this video, I've decided to listen to what the NPCs had to say, because it's what I didn't do in the live stream. But you can just go and run down the street here and trigger the next event. Although, I recommend you don't do that, because you tend to die very quickly if you don't have any backup. So these guys are hacking into the Combine network to get some information. That guy had a very bad day, clearly. Another issue with the level design, aside from like the difficulty curve, which is extremely unforgiving, is most of the maps are very, very linear, to the point where exploring around at all is really kind of pointless in most of the maps, which again kind of diverges a lot from what Half-Life 2 is all about. I mean, yes, Half-Life 2 is a linear game experience, there's kind of one set path to go down, but Valve do a great job of rewarding the player for exploring and finding quote-unquote secret areas, not really secrets, but just kind of hidden supply caches, you know, little kind of side areas you can go down and get some extra lore or, you know, just kind of a cool vista or something like that. The maps in the Citizen Returns are very just kind of, you know, put the blinkers on and go forwards, listen to the story, and then play a bit of gameplay and carry on. Again, I can probably count on one hand the amount of times I actually explored around a map and found something that was worth exploring for. Which, again, is a real shame. So here's another issue where the story is dictating the actions, but it doesn't quite mesh together well. This guy is telling me that the Combine are waiting for us, but if, if I look down the street, I don't see anyone. I don't see anything. This guy's freaking out like there's a, some huge goddamn army down there. <laughs> When in fact it's just a barricade, so... Yes, there's some disconnects like this, where you're just thinking as a player, there's nothing there, let's just go down there. But the story dictates otherwise. Oh, there saw you. The Combine data feed told us that Larry's being held in the nearby ice rink. Are we sure, sir? That's what the Combine data note says. It's the only lead we've got. And from all we can tell, the scene was set up a garrison between us and the ring. There's a chance that Larry is in there. We can't pass up that chance. All right, man, let's go. So, we're going to go to the ice rink and rescue our friend. This encounter is kind of interesting because if you run down that street earlier when we were scouting ahead with that guy, you can actually trigger the combine NPC early and it will run up an attack. Or you can just wait for this scene to occur. Now, the strange thing about this is that you can just leave all the work up to the NPCs. You can literally hide behind this corner. They'll kill all the Combine and the APC by themselves without any interaction from the player whatsoever. Which, again, is feels very, very strange in the Half-Life 2 game. Because generally, all the NPCs you're running around with in Half-Life 2 are background noise, essentially. You know, they'll shoot occasionally. They won't really do much, it's always up to the player to push forward and actually 
make things happen in the mod. Whereas here, it feels like a lot of the time you can just kind of sit back and let the NPCs clean up everything. Uh, there's a lack of player agency, which I think permeates everything, which is kind of a shame. So, in part two of the Citizen Returns, we'll explore the ice rink and see what happens there. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys, and I will see you next time.